Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Iron Man 2, starring Robert Downey Jr., Gwyneth Paltrow, Don Cheadle, Scarlett Johansson, Sam Rockwell, and Mickey Rourke, and directed by Jon Favreau. Now, before I get into the movie, I should say how excited I was to see it, but not too excited. But there was a scene that drawed me into the theaters, at least, and that was one scene that Mickey Rourke did, and I'll talk about that while I get into it. So let's get into it, shall we? So, the opening in Moscow with Ivan Vanko's father, Anton, is dying, and Ivan is played by Mickey Rourke who I do like as an actor, but he screams at the heavens. It was like, oh my god, that is an action revenge movie cliche. And I'll talk about that more on another movie series. And it's best. And I'll talk about it more with X-Men with Wolverine Origins. But it was pretty bad, and Ivan didn't really care for... I didn't really care for that character, and it's not because it's the he's the villain... It's because the character has a revenge story told in a bad way. And I also don't like his accent either, to be honest with you. I know he's supposed to be Russian, but eh, it's horrible. We pick up six months after the first Iron Man movie where Tony Stark is landing at the Stark Expo in New York. It was fun. Not as good as when we, first, when we were first met him in the first Iron Man movie. When Tony checks his blood, and that whole story about his metal chest did bother me, for story reasons, because he was dying as slowly and painful death, and I was not a fan of how that, how they told that story. It just felt like a total sequel, which this movie is a sequel, but it felt very bad. As we go downstairs with Tony and Happy Hogan, played by the movie's director John Favreau, we get a Stan Lee cameo where he plays Larry King, which I found funny in a good way. As they go to the car, they get into introduced to a brief role of Invisible Woman from the recent Fantastic Four movie, Kate Mora, as Marshall. Sending him to Washington, D.C. to talk to Senator Stern, played by Gary Shandling. And I had fun with Gary in this movie, even though I didn't know who he was until I saw this movie. And I'll talk about him in future movies, too. And I like seeing him here. They discuss what Iron Man is, this is and Senator Stern is talking about Tony giving the suit to the United States military. And we also get introduced to a complete... Or to a competitor of Tony's named Justin Hammer, played by Sam Rockwell. Who I always like seeing in the movies, including his recent Golden Globe winning role of Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. And I do like the character as well. In the same scene, we get a new roadie this time, played by Don Chino, Cheeto, excuse me, for the rest of the universe and the movies. And Mr. Cheeto gives a better performance here than Terrence Howard, but I don't like Rhodey in this movie. But I think Marvel Studios did the right thing by getting rid of Terrence Howard because he wanted more money and Marvel Studios got him out of there. And Rhodey with the military are just big babies about, with the whole, we want the Iron Man suit and Tony says no. If, if Tony says no, no means no. Get over it. Pepper feels a, like a whiny character this time and Gwyneth Paltrow felt like she didn't want to be on the set. And I felt that with her presence, to be honest. Natalie Rushman, a.k.a. Natasha Romanoff, a.k.a. Black Widow, being introduced, played by Scarlett Johansson, who will all be like in the later films, but here, I don't like her in this movie, because for a badass, she felt a little stale and weak, and we only see her kicking ass at the end of the movie, I feel like. Justin Hammer is in Morocco with Christine Everhart when Tony and, and Pepper and as well, I'll call her Black Widow, who's in, and Justin Hammer is in Morocco with Christine Everhart, played by Rockwell's actual girlfriend, Leslie Bibb, and another stale character who I'm here, unlike the first film. Tony racing the Monaco NASCAR, and the introduction of Whiplash, where's, who's Ivan with whips? And Tony vs. Whiplash was a pretty damn fun sequence, and that was a good brief fight. 
between the two. And that scene was a big and exciting in the trailer. And this is the reason why I went to theaters for this. Because he cracks those whips. And he goes like, let me show you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And here, it was a lot of fun, and I didn't dis and it didn't disappoint me, and didn't disappoint me, especially the way Ivan uses those whips, which looks like it could hurt like hell if not used carefully. But Mickey Rourke used them very well. Justin gets Ivan out of prison and hires him to make hammer suits, and doesn't deliver properly. Let me ref let me say it that way. Was a dragging moment of the film. Like, good God, this movie is dragging for me. But it's not like I'm disliking the movie on purpose. This script has problems. I will say it right now. Tony's birthday party scene where Tony gets drunk out of his mind and Rhodey and Tony start fighting each other in the Iron Man suits. And Rhodey beats Tony's ass and steals the suit. And that moment is when I'm starting to dislike the characters. Even Tony Stark. And he's our protagonist for crying out loud. This is not only bad writing, but bad storytelling, in my opinion. Samuel Jackson's Nick Fury is a cure and antidote to this movie. And I'm enjoying seeing him for what little he does. And it cured me from what I was going to give the movie to what I'll give it now. But I'll get that at the end of the show. While Tony is working on a new chest power, he runs into the Captain America shield from World War II, and I'll talk about that in the first Captain America movie. In two weeks, by the way, folks. Be sure to be here by then. And I thought I was... And I thought that was a good clue to set up the Avengers. Clark Gregg, I feel so bad for him, because he's being pushed around, and I felt... And it's... In next week's movie, Thor, because... And he's going to be pushed around again in next week's movie, Thor, because he says he's got to do something in New Mexico... Which will be setting in Thor. I just feel really bad for his character, Coulson. I'm just going to put it out there. I didn't say anything about him before. But I like him better here than in the first one. Well, not really. I'm just kidding. But I liked him better in the first one. Let me just say that way. Justin introduces the new Iron Man, the drones, who served in the military. And Ivan controls the drones and tries to kill Iron Man with Rhodey's suit. And that chase sequence is a fun chase sequence in my personal opinion you know the kid who had the iron man mask on and pretended to destroy a droid that almost killed him until iron man saves his life rumor has it that it was peter parker and to this day i don't necessarily believe it because this is before they confirmed that whole disney bought marvel and spider-man was owned by sony at this point the fight between iron man war machine versus whiplash and the droids from hammer industries was a pretty fun sequence and Black Widow kicking Hammer's guard's ass was a good action sequence as well. The, they beat Whiplash's ass and Tony gets Pepper out of the Stark Expo before she dies and Tony saves her and Rhodey is safe as well and Tony and Pepper are in a relationship now. Like, snap of a finger? Really? Because Pepper quits being the CEO of Stark Enterprises and Tony tells Nick that Nick, to Nick Fury as he's that he tells Tony he's not recommended for the Avengers Initiative. And Tony says he can't afford him to Fury and asks him to be a presenter at of Tony and Rhodey being honored, but instead uses Senator Stern was a good way to end on to end an Iron Man movie. But after the credits, we see Colson in New Mexico, which will be in the th next movie. And sees the hammer of Thor, which will take place in next week's movie. It's kind of a weird way to put an after credits scene. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 6.3 out of 10. This may not be the weakest Avengers movie, but it may be the weakest Iron Man movie yet. I don't like the characters, except for Justin Hammer and Nick Fury, who definitely saves this movie from disliking this movie. I was going to give it around the late fours, but it's a 6.3 for me and my taste. It's good fun for a weak movie to waste two hours on. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and next week I will be back with Thor. And before I come say goodbye for the week, 
be sure thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it be sure to subscribe watch some more videos and please leave a little pause and a comment in the bottom and until next time avengers assemble <laughs>